Hello. Today we're going to be addressing the topic of strength training and supplementation. This always proves to be a popular topic as anyone who's even slightly interested in the health and fitness industry, strength training in particular, will be more than aware that there's a wide <coughs> and very diverse amount of supplements you can and can't take. Supplementation as an industry is worth billions of dollars and the US alone is projected the supplement industry was worth $11.5 billion in the year 2012 and that was a 7% increase on the previous year of 2011. So it's both a large and growing industry and as such they have a lot of money to throw at advertising. So it can be very difficult for anyone to kind of decipher what's good, what's bad, um, where the nonsense lies, what works, what doesn't work, unless you actually go and look at the scientific literature yourself, which of course not a lot of people do because people have shit to do other than looking at PubMed, and I don't blame you. Um, so what we're going to talk about briefly before we even delve into this to topic is that supplements are, as the name suggests, a supplement to what you do. They're a peripheral factor, they're a small percentage thing, like a like vanishingly small percentage thing, if they even work. Um, if you're not taking care of the three pillars, and the three pillars are your training, as in its content and its quality, your diet, again, as in its content and its relevance to your goals, and your recovery strategies. And we say recovery strategies, what I really mean is your sleep. Are you getting enough sleep? Is it good quality sleep? Is it broken? Um, are you getting enough of it primarily? Are you getting enough of it? If you're not doing those three things and nailing them, if you're not training well, training appropriately, eating well, eating appropriate to your goals, and getting in enough sleep, you can pretty much f offhand just forget about supplements because the positive that you're going to get out of supplementation will be vastly outweighed by the negative of not doing one of these three things probably. Right, so now we've got that out of the way, let's bash on with the topic. Just to clarify, before I get someone jumping down my throat about supplementation for vitamin D deficiency or iron supplementation for this or that, we're talking about specifically the topic of strength training for healthy populations. If you have a health issue, then supplementation can be a great thing and can help out. You know, if it's been advised by your doctor to say. Um, okay, so first topic, what to waste the time. Um, amino acids, BCAAs, branched-chain amino acids, and amino acids in general, such as leucine, carnitine, glutamine. The evidence for the positive effect of these is fleeting and practically non-existent. Outside of like single trials, can't really say there's been a meta-analysis or systematic review, certainly none that I've seen, that shows that these have a positive benefit. So you can pre pretty much forget about amino acids and BCAAs out of hand. Fish oils, again, largely research topic and not a, <coughs> a large positive body of evidence for fish oils. Uh, I would call on the question, um, if someone brings a, brings a study to bear on these things, um, you really need to look at meta-analysis and systematic review because a single trial could be funded by a supplement company, it could be horrifically done, the methodology could be poor and might not be controlled. So to obviate for any of these pitfalls, if you're, if you're trying to say something with clarity and say something with a bit of force, certainly in sports science and science in general, systematic review is pretty much the way to go. So if we don't have a systematic review on the topic, or even just a straight up review on the topic that has a positive outcome or has a positive that shows that the body of evidence on this topic is positive, then we can't really say or recommend that you use it. So fish oils haven't really been shown to be more effective than placebo. So you pretty much count them out, discount them. Multivitamins, by far <coughs> the the best researched of any supplement and um, really no positive evidence above placebo on those so multivitamins you pretty much discount out of hand testosterone boosters unless the testosterone booster has been banned so things like superdrol mdrol t bullets things that are just 
basically an oral steroid that hasn't been tested or hasn't been brought through by a drugs company um you can pretty much discount those as well so things like horny goat weed um any kind of precursor for testosterone you could discount because they do nothing antioxidants uh, this is probably my favorite um, example of what of kind of discussing with the meta-analysis or systematic review sorry the cochrane foundation which are a large or also a body of scientists and doctors who take time out to systematically review topics in medicine and uh, did a large systematic review of antioxidants and their effect on mortality and they looked at something in the order of 50 studies with a cohort of 400,000 plus individuals and what they actually found was that antioxidants increased mortality that is to say if you take antioxidants you were 0.3 percent more likely to die when versus control or placebo so if you supplement with antioxidants according to this large meta-analysis or systematic review sorry you have an increased likelihood to die prematurely not incredibly um, robust evidence for their their efficiency certainly not for strength training so you can pretty much discount antioxidants and you can pretty much discount any health supplement on the market as regards as regards to its efficiency and certainly as regards to its efficiency for strength training so forget about all of that so what is worth looking at well there is one large meta-analysis done in i think it was 2004 2005 I'll link the study in the description so you can have a look at it. They looked at something like 250 different supplements and did a wide literature search to the whole body of evidence. And they found out of, er, of the 250 supplements that they looked at, there were three supplements, or there was, sorry, there were two supplements actually that had a positive outcome on muscle growth and strength. Those two supplements were HMB and creatine. So based off this body of scientific evidence hmb and creatine are pretty much the only two supplements or at least out of the 250 supplements that were looked at that had a positive a positive effect that is statistically a significant effect above control and above placebo and that's creatine hmb so you might want to look at taking those i'd also include protein in there and that's mainly just because it's a convenience food. It's a food supplement. So if you need to take in more protein, it can be expensive or it can be difficult to get it in chicken breast, steak, whatever you want. Even though steak tastes better, whey protein's cheaper. So it might be an option worth looking at. So now we've had a little look at that, <coughs> we'll go tackle the topic of what would I recommend for the average strength athlete or the average person trained with strength. So what you might want to look at is in the morning you take uh, whey protein two scoops so that'll be 50 50 grams of protein in the, in the shake have it with your normal breakfast in that um you maybe want to mix it mix it with water or milk depending i'd choose milk because it tastes better if you're on a diet water obviously zero calories so you might want to choose that five grams of creatine in there if you want to take hmb take your tablets then and then the next time I would take any supplements would be after training. And I would take um, a fast ad fast acting um, carbohydrate, so glucose, dextrose, maltodextrin, any of those three would do the job fine. Two scoops of, the, two scoops of that, one scoop of whey, and then take your creatine and your HMB. That would be my uh, supplementation strategy if I was then in act one. I don't currently enact a supplement strategy, but if I was to do one, that's what I'd do. And just as like a global overview of this, if you were to never even look at supplements in your training, you probably wouldn't notice the difference. We're talking about a very small change in the results you would see, almost to the point where you probably don't see any change in results. Uh, placebo effect is real. If you really believe that it's going to work, then you might train harder, pay more attention to your diet, pay more attention to your sleep, pay more attention to the ma the, the factors that actually matter. So via that, um, via that effect, supplements might work that way. As in, if you spend three hundred pound on supplements or three hundred dollars on supplements in a month, you 
probably more likely to to train better, sleep better, eat better. So via that method, they could work quite well. As in how they actually work, or if they actually work, what I would say to this is what I <coughs> what I say to this is this. If something has a performing enhancing effect that actually matters, it will be controlled as a drug. What I would ban it. What whatever the regulatory body in your country is, if steroids are illegal, if performance enhancing drugs are illegal, it will be banned along with the rest of them. Okay, so that pretty much concludes this episode. Uh, hopefully, within the next few days, castironstrength.com should be live. I know I say w- said it would be live in the next couple of weeks, two episodes ago or two videos ago. So that should be the case going forward in the next few days. So looking forward to getting that live, getting the community on there. That'll be great to interact with. And as always, any questions, comments, leave them in the comments section. Or shoot me an email at speedpowerperformance at gmail.com. Appreciate any feedback, so like the video, subscribe, dislike the video, play me, do whatever the hell you want to do. This is Mark, signing off.